Good morning and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right, just like when your old man told you to have the truck home by 10 p.m. <laughs> That's not happening. Hey, you guys responded and you wanted to know what this thing was and how I made it. It's pretty handy and I bet you have the crap laying around in your garage or shed that you can make your own. Let's take a look. So first things first, please excuse the potato chip box in the back. It's just, hey, any port in the storm, you know? What we have here is a hot wire cutter. This guy, I know this looks weird, but this allows me to change the resistance in the wire. So where you put this, you either have less or more resistance because this thing relies on amperage or current to get hot. That's the beauty behind this thing. Now, if you just want a video about actually making this thing, we can go ahead and do another one. I'm not going to tear this one apart just for the sake of argument. But if you can see here, I have two wires going through a U-shaped PVC frame. I use Schedule 80 just because that's what I had. Any kind of PVC will work, just something insulated. So the two wires, I have one wire connected to this washer here that I TIG welded onto a quarter 20 bolt, or you can use an eye bolt, anything. Whatever it takes for you to get this circuit working. The other wire comes up here to this that I just soldered onto an alligator clip. This is just crap I picked up at my local hardware store. This is nothing fancy. The spring up here allows to take up slack in this wire. When it gets hot, it stretches. So I need something to keep tension on this wire. All of this is connected to an AC variable transformer with a breaker. The only reason I have the breaker in here is because the secondary side of this transformer has a 12 amp fuse and it's pretty easy to blow if uh, you get heavy handed on the dial there. So this is my input power from the wall for the transformer and this is the output from the secondary. I have a loop here so I can monitor it with my ammeter just so I know when I'm getting close to the breaker. But if we spark this guy up, go ahead, turn on, turn on, and we smoke test. Now you guys see, as I start to crank this dial, the wire will begin to turn red and heat up. How cool is that? And this thing makes it so easy to cut foam, plastic, paper, different kinds of materials. It's just super handy. And the bigger you make this thing, I mean, you can cut four by eight sheets with this if you wanted to. So now that we've de-energized this, we can touch everything safely. I mentioned earlier about moving this clamp to change the resistance. So resistance is the lack of electrical flow or quite frankly the resistance to flow of electricity. So this hot wire here is effectively a resistor. So the longer it is the more resistance it has in the circuit. If I shorten the distance between my positive and negative it is less resistance so it'll take less power to heat this up. So if I don't need this entire distance to cut something I can move my clamp down to just the cutting area that I require and it takes less power from my transformer to run what I need to run. Now some of you might be asking, hey Dan, what the heck is that wire? Is that just crap I have laying in the drawer? Is that piano wire? Is it guitar string? Well, it can honestly be anything you want. However, they make stuff specifically for hot wire cutters. This crap is called nichrome wire. That's a hybrid for nickel chromium wire. This is specifically formulated to be an electrical resistor that will heat up super, super hot and still retain its tensile strength. Don't get me wrong, eventually it will fatigue and break just like any other material, but this stuff is specifically made to handle it and they come in all different diameters for different applications. Just remember, the thicker it is, 
the more amperage it will take. So you need a power supply with more guts. So I bet you guys are probably thinking, at the beginning of this video, this dude said that I can make this thing by myself. But hey, I don't have transformers laying around my house. So this thing is super cool. Like if you can get one, I strongly suggest it because their applications for this thing are endless. You've probably seen me talk about this in the past and I'll link a video here talking specifically about this transformer and how awesome it is. However, I bet you guys probably have one of those big clunky computer plugs laying around your house. That is a DC transformer that plugs into an AC outlet. And if you look on the tag, it'll tell you input and output voltage. If you have one that's like five or 10 amps, even better, the higher, the better, because you can control the amperage with this wire here. It's nifty. You can make this thing yourself with minimal effort, I'm telling you. And this is so cool to have laying around. So if you guys want this thing in more detail, we can actually go through and make another one. Honestly, it took 10 minutes. It's not that involved. And this stuff here, this nichrome wire, I got mine from McMaster Car, but I'm willing to bet that Amazon has it too. Honestly, what doesn't Amazon have? So if you guys are interested in this stuff, drop a comment, let me know. We can dive a little bit deeper. Until next time.